Good morning, folks. We've got some space weather to see, including the return of solar flares. We'll see several weather animations from the Goddard SVS. We've got two papers on geophysics that are well worth the time, but we begin with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find several incoming bright spots. The new sunspots appear fairly active as they are turning onto the Earth-facing half of the sun, including one just north of the equator near the limb. That's where the majority of the M-class flare activity was found over the last day, and we'll see that a bit better here. Flare flashing at those active region sunspots on the left. Luckily, all impulsive thus far, but they will be turning in to face the Earth as we head into the new month here. We'll be keeping an eye on those areas for flaring, but we'll also be watching the plasma filaments. Big one on the Earth-facing half right now, you can see the thin, dark, snake-like rope that spans a phenomenal distance in the lower corona. Couple things to monitor on this Sunday, but next, let's go to some more eye candy. We have several animations here, and they're utilizing satellite data to map specific aspects of the atmosphere. These are hitting the period of mid to late September, and in order, these are carbon monoxide, ozone, near surface temperatures, near surface winds, relative humidity, particulate matter, nitrous oxides, and precipitation. The animations are available from the Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio, link is in today's list, and they demonstrate the data utilization power of their supercomputers and visualization programs. We'll head to the articles up next. First one describes the definitive determination that rapid intensification of tropical storm systems is on the rise. While the number of storms that undergo rapid intensification is up only slightly, the number that have multiple intensifications is way up. We've shown the previous papers on how this is impacted by space weather activity, and with Earth's weakening magnetic field, we've all been expecting more of these intensification events. They surely appear to be happening. Last but not least, another excellent paper on how penetrating electric fields from solar storms tend to have global, sweeping ionospheric impacts. This is another thing we've hit before in previous papers. It's not just the polar region impacted by space weather, but often the equatorial region takes an even stronger pounding. This can impact those previously mentioned storms, by the way, through the global electric circuit. We greatly appreciate your support. Find all your resource links below the video in the description box. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.